friendly followers on YouTube and so welcome back from me because I've been away for a week and I've been down at Coney Borough Wood near Etchingham in Sussex doing a Kemp Craft course with the Woodlaw organisation. Uh, good week, I met the man himself, Mr Ray Mears and we had a bit of a chat, well we all had a bit of a chat really and it was good, I had a great time. Started off very basic, you know, doing a few small projects, building right up to the end of the course where we built a shave horse. Um, at the end of this short video, um, I will be putting up a little slideshow of some of the things we did and of, of course the week. Um, the purposes of this short video is to scatter gunshot with the two birds with one stone thing. Um, two favourite knives, uh, some bits on that are made, only a couple of bits, and also what we did with the axes at the at this course. Um, the axe we used was this one. This is the small forest axe by Grandpa's Brooks, and we've finished them. We've done what we've called what is called a London stock finish. It's very good, it's very smooth, I'll be going over this soon and in a future video I will be doing the very same finish on my small forest hatchet which is this one. Um, on the course we also made birch tar or known as Russian oil. Uh, it, it's easy to make but difficult to get hold of the bark because it has to be done like a swish roll in the main tin. Um, I'll try and find a, put a link up on how to make it on the on my at the end of this video. Um, the purposes of the birch tar is to put it on the mask. I shall unclip these masks and If you can see the mask, the smaller of the two masks is lighter in colour. That hasn't got the birch tar on it. This one has. It, it enriches the colour, waterproofs it and just makes it generally a better sheath. As you can see there's a distinct difference in colour. Um, we've gun oiled the blades. And if you look, again, there is a distinct, distinct difference in colour. This one has been prepared, we've shaved off all the varnish, and then we've used a mixture of linseed oil and white spirit, 50-50%. And this was rubbed in over a period of a week. You wire walled the haft first, then rubbed in, then painted on the mixture, the boiled linseed oil and white spirit mixture, then you wire walled it, rubbed it off with a paper towel, burnt the paper towel, doused the wire wall in water, and then hung up the axe to dry overnight. You do this over a week, and then you do it once a week for a month, and then once a month for a year. Beautiful finish, a no blister finish, it feels like butter. Right, so I'll put these to one side. Right, there we go, you can see the differences between the axe sheaths and the axe handles. If I've come down, it's a lovely cut of this axe handle. And a little bit of pyrography at the top, um, just to indicate the four directions of life. Okay, on my two favourite knives. And apart from the Patterson knife, which I'm making a handle for, which comes just as a blade with a full chain, these are the two that I tend to use the most. I do use a, a more clipper, but for splitting wood and heavier duties such as 
lopping down small branches, I use this. This is my Luku. It stains slightly with sweet chestnut tannin, so I need to sort the edge out. It's a wonderful little knife. And I know Stein Tents has a larger Luku about that big. But this suits me fine. It's almost like a mini machete. Uh, fits well in the hand. And it's great for doing feather sticks. And it's a, in general, it's a nice knife. Just got to do a bit of cleaning up from it because it had some pretty heavy use last week. Um, birch, curly birch handle. And birch bark, leather, reindeer boss, brass knife cap. Fits in well with this leather sheath. This is my other favourite knife and you may recognise it as the Mora 510. It's a good knife, half tame, fits well in my hand, has the Raymier's logo on it, but I was unable to find a leather sheath, so I ended up making a wooden one of my own. I've still got to do some modifications on the sheath, and this, I can't fault this knife. Now, some people sort of throw their hands up about what knives people use. And Morse Kohansky, I would say he's almost the godfather of bushcraft, tends to use Mora knives almost exclusively. So if they're okay for him, they're okay for me. And I have it on very good authority that he still uses them. The wooden sheath I made myself. I'm in the process of making another one, but I'd like to be able to work out how to do the binding because I want to do leather from there to there to hold the actual knife in. <coughs> Good knives. There are many, many knives out there. Some people are sucked in by, by all the fancy gadgets you get on a knife, but a knife is a tool. You shouldn't have too many fancy things, you just need one good plain edge. You don't need fancy saws on the back, sort of double convex, scandy grinds, nothing like that. Straight flat blade does you well. Um, what more I can say? I am in the process of actually purchasing a, 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 a Ben Orford knife, but that will be, I should think, in the early part of next year. Meanwhile, these are my favourite knives. They do they serve well and they, they do good. Alright. So we move on. A newly acquired tool on my bushcraft week in the woods. It is a, it is a gutter adds. I've got flat adzes. This is, we were all given a small forest axe, but as I already had one, I arranged a deal to have one of these delivered instead on the course. Great for carving out bowls, you use it across the grain, and I find it's a lovely little tool. I've yet to use it fully, I've just had a little play around with it. But I've got some projects lined up for this one. I've got to make a mask. And I'll be coming to that in another video of masking your sharps up that do not have sheaves and buck saws. So I'll be making a new buck saw soon and I've got a nice new mask for that. Right, just a couple of projects that we made on the course. Two little wooden pegs actually proved their worth. I managed to peg out my washing one day. And a little hooky stick and the long stick. If you look carefully, hole and you poke the hooky bit in there. You have a small wedge up the bottom, up the back end, and you have yourself a coat hanger, and it works. I used it the whole week. I'm quite pleased with it. So, without further ado, without further ado, 
it's not outside yet I've got to make a shelter for it that's the shave horse I made and on here is some projects on the go the small shrink box a bread come chopping board a noggin and a small bowl there we go I'm really proud of this because at the start of the week not only was it a tree I'd never fell the tree or made a shave horse before and here is a first attempt at the a small bark berry box or berry basket um, never made one of these before either just got to stitch the sides up make a collar for the top and generally finish it off you like the little side slideshow that I had okay it's not brilliant but it's of the week we had I, I would have done a video but it I'll be focusing on doing the videoing and not doing the work it was a grand week I met as you've probably seen in a brief picture I did meet Ray Mears himself and in a future video I'll be showing you how to do the London stock finish on your axe. It is a wonderful finish. The reason why it's called London stock finish is Purdy Guns used to use it for their stocks. It's a good, it's a good finish. Stops you having blisters and improves your axe no end. Um, as you saw in the slideshow, we I used all the axes that were seen. They're not all mine. They all they all belong to Woodlaw, but. We all had a chance to use the axes in felling a tree and doing various other duties like carving. In the future I have it in mind to get myself a small Swedish carving axe to help with my green wood projects and carving projects at home here. And I wish you all adieu until the next time.